Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Matt with Coyote Creek Archery. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna talk about my early season hunting gear, the clothing and gear that I would typically use for early season hunting. Now, this is gonna be mostly open country, whitetails, um, pronghorn, mule deer in the months of August, September, maybe into the first half of October. Temperatures are gonna be a little bit warmer. Um, 80s, maybe even up into the 90s. Um, hopefully not that warm, um, you know, down into the 70s and that type of thing. Not where it's going to be really very cool. And also, um, I'm more of an active hunter, more of a mobile hunter, um, spot and stock, decoying on the ground, that type of thing. I will hunt from ground blinds. Um, I will hunt from tree stands from time to time. And I think what I've got here and I'm talking about will work, will work for all those situations, um, especially in a early season in a in a warmer environment but just keep that in mind this is mostly what i'm talking about for you know 70s through upper 80s 90s where it's going to be a little bit warmer you're going to be active and you're going to be be warm and, and sweating and that type of thing so not a lot of insulation pieces here that i'm going to be talking about we'll get into that into future videos i'll go through a mid-season kit and then what i would typically use for late season um, i'm focused primarily on kuyu products because that is what what I personally like to use. Um, I've been using their, their gear for several years, for a long time, and uh, I know it can be expensive. There's different ways uh, of purchasing, purchasing them. Try to look for sales. Uh, being a veteran, I do get a veteran's discount. And then I also try, um, you can find some, some used items and that type of thing as well. Um, anything that you buy new is gonna have a warranty, which is great. I have uh, had to use that before and they were fantastic about dealing with a warranty on things. So it is beneficial to buy things directly from them if you can. Um, and I know these things are expensive, but for me, uh, the level of comfort that it gives me and the confidence, I feel like I can hunt a little bit harder, a little bit longer, gives me more confidence in the field and I feel like, uh, like it just makes me a, a better hunter. So that's why I choose to use these products. They're not all QU. Um, I do use, um, I've used some Sitka things, some Black Ovis things. I've used some things from First Light and I still use kind of a mix of some of those. But about 95% of what I'm talking about does come from, from Kuyu. And so that's kind of where my perspective is coming from. So starting with pants, um, this is again, this is early season. These are the Kutana stretch woven pants. And um, I used to wear the attack pants and they were fit like pajamas. I mean, they were probably the most comfortable pants I've ever owned, never worn for hunting. But they were just too heavy and too warm for early season. So if you wanna look at the inside here, it's very, very light, kind of just a very light brushed texture, but it's, it's thin, there's not much to it. Uh, this is a two-way stretch and it's very durable. And that's what I really like about these Kutana pants. Um, is the durability of them. They're fairly quiet. There's a little bit, little bit of noise to them, uh, but they're quieter than, than some other pants that I've worn. The attacks may be just a little bit quieter just based on the material. The tacks are gonna get more, uh, more pulls and that type of thing. The Kutanas are gonna be uh, a lot more durable. Um, not as much stretch. They're just a two-way stretch versus a four-way stretch, but they're lighter weight and they're cooler. Um, zipper pockets. On the back, um, the front hand pocket, you've got just a single on the left side and then the right side, there are two pockets. The pockets are mesh on the inside, so you can kind of see that, kind of a mesh pocket. This other pocket here on the right side is kind of small. You're not gonna fit much in there, maybe some chapstick, maybe a couple car keys or, or something small like that. If you've got a real thin wallet, you might fit it in there or something like that. Um, it's got zippered hip pockets, and again, it's got that mesh interior to where you get some breathability, but you really get your breathability from these hip, hip vents that you're gonna see on all of the Kuyu pants. So I can, I can zip down this hip vent on both sides of the pants, and now um, I'm dumping that heat. My legs are able to breathe as I'm moving and building up heat and sweating and that type of thing. So really like the uh, Kutana pants, the stretch woven Kutana pants for early season. Now, I will tell you that I'm about five foot 10, 160 pounds. Typically in pants, I wear 32 waist, 34 in the inseam, and uh, these are a 32 and they fit great. I'll post a video up here. You can see me in these pants. 
Um, this is a 32 with their just their standard length inseam and the Kutanas fit me really well. So really have been happy with these um, for an early season pant. The other pants that I will wear earlier in the season, and this is depending on how I'm hunting and what I'm doing, um, this is the Pro Pant. Okay, it's called, actually called the Attack Pro. And the inside of this you can see is a little bit thicker, a little more of a, a almost, I wouldn't call it a fleece, but it's a real soft kind of a brushed material. But it is heavier build, so it's more like the Attack Pants. But what makes these unique is the knee pads. Okay, so it's got a built-in kind of a leather knee pad. It's rather thin. It's not real thick, but it is padded, but it works really well. I like it because it's not big and bulky. Um, you hardly notice it's there, but when you need it, it works really well. I used these a couple years ago on an antelope hunt in Wyoming, and I was you know crawling around, and I got into some, some cactus and some burrs and that type of thing. They stuck in my knee pads, and I had to spend some time pulling them out of my knee pads, but I didn't have anything in my knees. Um, so I really like that about them. Um, they are a little bit heavier, so I'll wear these more into the mid-season, October, November. Probably the middle of the season, this is the pants that I will wear most of the time when it gets a little bit cooler because they are a little bit heavier. But I do wear them occasionally early in the year um, if, I am, if I'm doing some crawling around and that type of thing and, and need the knee pads. Again, they've got the hip vents down the side, um, two zippered pockets in the back, um, two hand pockets, and again, you've got two zippered hip pockets. If I can find them, yeah, two zippered hip pockets on here as well. These fit maybe just a tad bit more snug. You can see here in the video again, I'm wearing a size 32 in the QU Pro Pants, and uh, they fit just a little bit more snug. My hands going into my pockets are just a little bit tighter on these, but they're not uncomfortable at all. They, they're really very comfortable. Um, Really not much difference between them as far as the fit goes. 32 is what I wear in jeans, and uh, the 32 in the QU fits me perfectly. So those are the two pants that I would primarily use in the pre early season. Uh, moving to tops and base layers. Uh, when it's warm, I'm a big fan of merino wool. And um, when it's cold, I really like to wear synthetics. And to some people, that seems completely backwards. But to, to me, it makes sense, and here's why. Um, the merino one, um, it keeps me cooler when it's warm out. And that seems a little bit strange being a wool product. It's a very thin wool product that I'm gonna use. Um, it keeps me a little bit cooler. It doesn't dry out as quickly. So if I do sweat, um, I'm able to be cooled by that. And um, it does a good job of keeping the sun off. I've had a couple issues with, with skin cancers in the past. And so I like to be able to have protection from the sun and that type of thing. And when um, in the winter time, if I've got multiple layers on and I'm moving and I start sweating, I don't want to have merino underneath because it's going to retain that moisture. And then when I stop to glass or stop to, to, to eat or do whatever I'm doing, um, then that's, that wet undergarment's going to stay wet and it's going to get me colder faster to where if I've got a synthetic underneath, when it's cold out, that um, sweat's going to evaporate more easily and I'm going to be drier and be more comfortable. So for me, whenever it's hot, I'm wearing uh, merino. Whenever it's cold, I'm wearing synthetic underneath. And this is a um, this is just their QU 145 weight um, merino wool. Everything here is in the bias pattern, which is just what I started started using. Um, I think people probably care more about the camo pattern than than the deer and elk and whatever do. Um, but I've had good luck with this. It's worked really well from tree stands, from on the ground, open country, um, whatever. As um, long as you're not moving and, and you're, you're playing the wind with your scent, I think you're going to be okay. You can get by with solids just as well. Any of the patterns are going to work. This is just what um, I bought years ago and what I've just kind of stuck with. So the bias pattern works for me. But um, it is a little bit thinner. So I don't know if you can see up here as well, it's a little bit thinner material. It, is, it does have some stretch both directions. Um, the merino is not quite as durable as maybe a synthetic. You may get a few little pulls on here. I may have just a couple little holes, but really overall it's done pretty well for me. This is a quarter zip 
They do make different versions of this with the hood. They make one that's just uh, like a t-shirt neck. This is the quarter zip, so it does have a small pocket and then it zips down and opens up. So you can see here in the video, this is me wearing this in a size medium. I always wear a medium in Kuyu base layers. And then as I move up into mid layers and outer layers, I'm gonna wear a size large. So typically my t-shirt size, I would wear a size large t-shirt. If I'm wearing a dress shirt or a polo shirt, I'm typically wearing a medium. So that kind of gives you a reference for, um, for how that would work. But again, 145, this is a Kuyu, 145 Merino with the, with the zip in size medium. I wear this a lot when it's, uh, when it's warmer. Another piece, uh, another type of Merino, this is a Merino blend that um, is a little, probably a little better price that I've had good luck with. And this is from Black Ovis, okay? Uh, this is a size large. Um, I could probably get away with a medium in this as well, but the, the large has worked fine. This is the Coyote Brown, and um, it is a, a blend, so there is some polyester in this. It's been very durable, very comfortable, and um, something I really like to wear when it's a, a little bit warmer out. Okay, so I know I just talked about how I like to wear Merino when it's warm. Um, this is a new piece for me this year. I have not used it hunting yet, so we'll see how this goes. Um, this is the Gila. It's a hooded version from Kuyu. And I primarily bought this for when it's warmer and I wanted to have a hood. Um, I could have bought a Merino with a hood. It's a little bit more expensive, so I decided to try this out. Uh, very comfortable. It fits very nice. It's lightweight, um, so I feel like it's going to breathe well. and keep me cool. The thing with your um, synthetics is they're going to start to smell a little bit sooner. I know they, they build some different things into these garments to help with that. Um, but you do start to stink after a couple of days of wearing it without washing it. But this does have the hood. So you can see here in the video, this is me with the Gila. And uh, I like that the hood gives me some coverage over my ears and over my neck. I can wear a ball cap underneath this if I need to and uh, give me a little bit better protection. But um, I haven't used this yet. We'll see how this works. Um, this is a size medium as well. So size medium in the Gila. And um, it's a nice piece. I'm gonna, gonna hang on to it and try to use it out. This does have the thumb loops, the thumb, thumb holes in it. So you can see here, you can stick your thumb through there. And so that way when you're, um, you can get some coverage over your hands if you want to, or you're putting on a jacket or another layer, keeps those sleeves from wanting to ride up as you're, as you're putting that piece on, so. Moving up, another thing that I will use if it gets a little bit cooler, maybe it's in the mornings, uh, maybe it's in the evenings as it starts to cool off. This is the Pro Merino. And I'm not sure what the weight of this is. It's a 200 or 210 or something like that. Pro Merino, and this is kind of a blend as well. So it says here 53% um, Merino, 38% polyester, and 9% nylon. So best I can tell, the inside of this is gonna be a merino wool. And then the outside is gonna be more of a polyester, which is gonna give you some more durability on the outside. It does have um, some stretch to it, which is nice. And this is the hooded version. So kind of just like the 145, just a little bit heavier. It's got a chest pocket. It's got the zipper in the front where you can open that up and dump some heat if you want to. I'm probably not gonna wear this as a base layer. I'll probably wear one of those lighter weight merinos and then throw this over the top. And um, then I've got a hood to cover up my ears, cover up my neck, and, uh, and that type of thing. Again, it does have the thumb loops, thumb holes in here to where it um, helps me to slide this on, covers up my hand if I want to use it that way. I do have a few little snags on this, nothing too major. Um, but I wear this a lot, and this is a piece that I really like. I also like that it's a little bit more muted color, a little bit more subdued, so it's not shiny like a polyester would be. It's going to be a little bit more matte, a little flatter finish to where you're not going to get a reflection or something like that and be seen as easily. So Pro Merino um, with the hood, really like this piece as well. And then if it gets even colder yet, um, this piece um, is something that I, I have with me almost all the time. Now, if it's really warm, I'm probably not going to have it, but if it gets down into the 60s, uh, down into the 50s, that type of thing, maybe in the mornings or later in the evenings, or maybe you just get a cooler day that time of year, this is the Strong Fleece 210, and probably one of my favorite pieces. I want to show you the inside. 
So it's kind of a, a brushed fleece, really soft, kind of similar to what the um, Peloton 97 would be, but it's heavier. Um, I did have a Peloton 97 hoodie. It's real lightweight and very warm for how much it weighs. It weighs basically nothing, um, but it didn't hold up near as well. I had some snags and some pulls, and um, so I got rid of it, and I'm using this Strong Fleece 210, which is very durable. I don't have any pulls or snags on the sleeves. It looks brand new, and I wear this quite a bit. It does have the thumb loops again, like the rest of them do. So we've got a thumb loop. I should say this is a size large. All the other tops have been size mediums, but this is a size large. You can see me wearing it here in a size large. Probably have a little bit extra room, maybe a little bit more length in the sleeves, but the sleeves are still snug against my arms to wear if I'm bow hunting or that type of thing. I can still wear this and not, not have to worry. It does have kangaroo pocket. So you can see the kangaroo pocket and um, allows you to run your hand all the way through. So it's open all the way th through like this. And it does, the pocket is a little bit higher, higher up so that um, it's designed so if you're wearing a pack, your waist belt's gonna go down low, your hands will slip through up top with the, uh, with the, with the kangaroo pocket. But again, this is a size large, strong fleece 210, probably, probably my favorite piece. I have that with me almost all the time. A couple of accessories that I like. These are the attack gloves. And um, these are an extra large. I've got bigger hands and smaller wrists um, for a guy my size. The extra large fits me just about right. It's not really going to provide you a lot of warmth. It's going to keep mosquitoes off. It's going to give you some protection on your hands. So if you're around rocks or sharp plants, thorns, cactus, that type of thing, it's going to give you some protection there. Not going to be super warm, but I can wear these into mid-season and be fine with that. So I've, I've been pretty pleased with these. There is kind of an elastic grip here around the wrist. It's kind of tight when you start out, so as you wear them and break them in, um, it may be a little tough to get them on and off at first, but as you wear them, that will kind of break in, and um, they've been, been really good. The other glove that I wear is just simply just a military wool glove liner that I've cut the fingers off of. I wear these quite a bit on both hands. Um, lets me use my fingers. It still keeps my hands warm. Yeah, my fingertips may get a little bit cool. I can keep them in pockets or keep them in um, mittens or something like that to keep them warm. But I like this because I have my fingers and I have more dexterity. And then I also like this with a bow. And I'll use this even early season um, because I'm not putting any torque on that bow. I've got this, this wool glove where that bow is going to sit there. And um, it's not allowing me to put a tight grip on that bow and torque it in any way. So I like, I like to have a fingerless wool glove. And there's other brands that you can buy those from. Those are just um, liners from, from military glove liners that I've just cut the fingers off of. Okay, a couple more things. This is just a merino neck gaiter. And it's just a one size. It doesn't say what weight this is. I'm pretty sure it's, it's a lightweight merino wool neck gaiter and I'll wear this in uh, early season as well to give me some coverage up over my face. I can put my hood up over the top and all I all is really sticking out is my eyes so it gives me some great coverage and also helps to keep the sun off a little bit as well. But mer the merino one is nice. I have another one that I'll talk about in another video that I wear when it gets a little bit cooler. Um, these are QU Scree Gaiters and I really like these. For early in the year, I can wear just a lighter weight hiking boot. I don't have to wear a heavier um, hunting boot or mountaineering boot type of thing. I can just wear kind of a lightweight hiking boot. Put these over the top. They've got some stretch to them. And it keeps out rocks. It keeps out debris from, from grass or whatever you might be going through. It keeps you from having to stop, clean out your boots, clean out your socks and that type of thing. It just gives you some protection. And um, a little bit tight, I guess, around your ankles. Takes some getting used to but well worth it. These things have been, been really nice to have for early season. For a belt, I like to use a marsupial belt. It's just their web belt. Um, it's just a simple little buckle and it just slides into this. You can adjust the length of it, uh, but it's been great. And like all the marsupial products, it's made in the USA, it comes from Arizona. They make a lot of great stuff. Um, I use their bino harness and I'll try to talk about that maybe in my next video because I don't have it here with me. 
Um, but wanted to show you some of the things that I use in the early season and hopefully to help you get an idea of some of these products because I know I've tried to find some videos. You can't buy these things in store. They have to come directly from Kugu unless you're buying them um, used or that type of thing. So it's really hard to see them up close. So I wanted to show you how they fit me, how they work for me, um, show you what they look like on the inside, what the, the brushed fleece lining and that type of thing is going to look like. Um, so that you can get a better idea and help you make a little bit better decisions as far as purchasing these items. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, again, I'll talk about some mid-season clothing that I'll wear during the, the mid-season, kind of right through the rut and up into December before it gets cold. And then I'll talk about some late season things in another video as well. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, thank you folks for watching and have a great day.